You're listening to the Fitness Matters Podcast with Paula B, and this is episode number 250. Paula B's book club reads The Untethered Soul. Welcome to the Fitness Matters Podcast, where every week we talk about the fitness matters that matter to you. I'm Paula B, YouTuber, certified life and weight loss coach, soon to be author, and your best middle-aged fitness friend. Are you ready to talk about the fitness mindset that matters to you? Me too. Let's go. Hello, hello, my friends. I'm so excited to bring you this episode of the Fitness Matters podcast. This is a replay of the live book club meeting that we had where we talked about the untethered soul. My friends, these book clubs that we have every other month in partnership with Chirp Audiobooks, where you can download audiobooks for fantastic discounts with no monthly subscription fees, are so much fun. As you will hear in the replay on today's podcast, we had a lot of laughs. We got into some really good conversations and I would love to see you at the next one. Make sure that you go to chirpbooks.com slash Paula. That's P-A-H-L-A. On that first page, you'll find a button that says follow. That's a great way to get emails from Chirp Books with their discounts and information about the, uh, the book club, but also Also, make sure that you click on the button that says learn more under our latest book because that's where you can register to come to the Zoom meetings and talk with me live. Our next meeting will be in October. I don't have a date for you just yet, but I'll have information for you by the time the next podcast rolls around. In the meantime, enjoy this one. Thank you for listening. So you guys, hello, happy Friday and welcome to the book club. I am so excited to be here with all of you today. Just in case we haven't met before, I am Paula B. I am the unusual combination of a fitness YouTuber and certified life coach. And I specialize in helping women make peace with their menopausal bodies by moving their bodies and also by managing their minds, which is how I came to be the host of the Paula B Wellness Over 50 book club in partnership with Chirp Audiobooks. So enough about me. Are you guys ready to talk about the untethered soul? I'm excited about this one this month. And let me actually, before we start talking about it, let me manage your expectations just a little bit. I know sometimes when we like go to a book club that we think that it's going to be a certain way. And I will tell you that the reason I love being the host of this book club, first of all, because it's honestly, it's really nice partnering with Chirp Audiobooks. Like I love working with them as a brand. They offer you guys amazing discounts with no monthly fees. They offer me a nice chance to be an affiliate. Like I'm, I'm excited to have this opportunity like presented to me because honestly, I wasn't necessarily thinking about hosting my own book club, but now that I have one, I love it. But here's the thing that I do not choose books that I have already read and know and love that I want to like share with you and teach you about. I choose books that I have not read that I don't know very much about sometimes like in the case of of this month's Untethered Soul. This one has been recommended to me for years. I mean, this book came out quite some time ago, been recommended to me for years, but I've never read it before. So Our conversation today is, I would call it raw and unfiltered and opinions only. Like, I'm not trying to teach you what to do with this material. I am really curious about your opinion about the material and whether or not you have maybe incorporated it into your own life and all those kinds of things. But first, I actually want to know, because this is a an older book, had you already read The Untethered Soul before or was this one new to you? I see lots of shaking heads. You guys remember, this is going to be an audio only podcast later. (laughs) Terry says it was new to me. Interesting. I, this book came out in 07, 09. Amy says it's new to me. Julie said she'd never heard of it before. Interesting. Uh, The only reason I had heard of it was uh, because it's been recommended to me so many times. Maggie says, I owned it, but had never read it. Oh, so it's been sitting in your TBR list for a while. So fun. How exciting to be able to be given the opportunity to read a book like that. I, I have a couple of books in my TBR that we might get to eventually because I, I do you guys do that too, where you'll buy like three, four books at a time and then you'll only read one of them. (laughs) 
Sally turns her head and looks at her bookshelf full of books. I assumed you read all of those though. No, are some of those still be too read? <laughs> Many of them. Okay, good. I um, so so in that vein, did you guys read the book or did you listen? Uh, and just so we're really clear, yes, this podcast is sponsored by Trip Audio Books, but you don't have to have listened to the book to participate. I just so that we're always clear about that. I honestly don't care where you get the book. I don't even care if you've read the book. You can just like hang out and chat with us. That's cool too. Um, so Terry says both. Oh, wow. Read it and listened. Amy says that she listened to it. Julie listened only. Shannon listened. Uh, Marilyn read the book and loved it. Awesome. Um, Maggie says, read a few chapters in the paper book and then downloaded it from Chirp and listened to the rest. Jamie listened only and Sally read it. Interesting. I listened only um, and I, I have to be honest, this book for me, I actually wish I would have read it. Normally, I love listening I found this narrator to be distractingly difficult to listen to. I did not care for his tone. I, I felt that his tone was rather condescending. And I was, I was curious the whole time I was listening, whether or not I would have felt the same way reading the book. And I, now, and now that it's in my head, like I'll, I'll never know because I'm sure if I read the book, I'm going to read it the same way because I can still kind of hear his, his voice in my head. And so I tried to like speed it up a little bit and slow it down a little bit. Like I was just trying to see if there was some way that I could hear it that didn't feel so condescending. His, his voice was, it was tough for me. It really was. And I definitely found myself thinking a lot about the concepts later and trying to think about them without thinking about the delivery because the delivery for me personally was so difficult. Um, and Maggie says, yes, the narrator wasn't great. Julie said slightly condescending and Sally says, I didn't read it as condescending. Okay. That's so good to know. I, I might have to get the, if not paper version, at least a digital version and, and simply read it and see if it sits differently with me. Uh, Marilyn says she's glad, glad she read it. <laughs> and Amanda said, I thought he was enthusiastic about the message. Oh, and you know what? That is a very good way of, of hearing it. Um, and I'm getting ahead of myself about what I want to ask. So I won't do that. Okay. So it sounds like we've actually got a, like a really good mix of like who read it versus who listened to it, which means that we're moving on to my next question, which I've already, I've already heard a couple of answers, but I'm very curious because it's always the first thing. Did you like it? I mean, like just in general, like overall, yes or no. Did you think it was a good and or helpful book? Amy says, Yes. Um, I, oh gosh, the chat just went crazy. Okay. So Amy says, yes. Jamie says, yes. Amanda says, I loved it. Julie says, yes, I am excusing the condescension <laughs> repetition and rose colored glasses because I had an epiphany. I love it. So even more so than, than liking the book, it was helpful for you. That's always honest. You guys, I think you, if you've met me before, you know that I would always rather go for helpful than just good because helpful helps you. It moves you forward. Terry says, yes. Maggie says, yes. Sally said, all right, but not on my favorite list. So interesting. And Marilyn's very helpful. I love this. So, so let's talk about that. I mean, really specifically about the difference between loving a book and finding it to be helpful. I, I found myself agreeing with a lot of like the concepts that he was talking about and yet really struggling to find it helpful. Meaning I didn't think it was, I, it was funny because when I was looking for like, I, I was really specifically Googling last night because by the way, I finished this book yesterday. Uh -uh. <laughs> so proud of myself. <laughs> Last month, just for context, last month I, or two months ago when we read the last book, because it's every other month, I finished the book 
what, seven minutes before the book club started. <laughs> so, so I was really proud of myself for finishing this book yesterday and really giving it a chance to like percolate. Okay. So, so Marilyn says, Oh, that the reason she found it so helpful. Um, I have started meditating finally. Okay. That's a really good and very interesting point because I like what I'm saying. I, so I was Googling last night to like find book club type questions. Like I had some questions that I knew I wanted to ask, but I was, I was curious, like how other book clubs like talked about this book. And, um, and I found there was like, a a 12 steps, like the 12 steps of the untethered soul. And I thought to myself, I didn't think the book was really presented as step-by-step instructions, which was one of the things that I really struggled with. I found it, I found it interesting. I understood the concepts. I mean, the concepts, uh, for those of you who have ever listened to my podcast, you know, I understood those pun- those concepts. I These are things that I talk about pretty frequently also. So I understood it, but I, I didn't feel like it was a step-by-step, here's what to do next kind of book. So I'm very intrigued to know what it was that you got out of it that that felt like a, here's how to implement this in your life. So Marilyn says, I started meditating. I love it. Um, Amanda said it reinforced the, the methods. Oh, in our Get Your Goal group and other books we have read in book club. So I, I, not to put you on the spot, Amanda, but if you don't mind answering, I'm curious what it was about the method and, and here's why I ask. I mean, here's really why I ask, because it's always it's always about me. <laughs> but, but I am curious because I I try very hard to be clear about here's a step by step process, like in the Get Your Goal group and in the podcast and, and when I'm talking about like thought work, mindset work, that kind of thing. And and therefore, oh, Amanda, you're going to come talk to me. Thank you. So what did you find about his method, really specifically like the process that intermeshed for you? He, he, to me, he just seemed like he reinforced a lot of the same ideas and, and, and things that we do, like feeling your feelings, acknowledging your thoughts and, you know, letting things not bother you necessarily. I mean, he kind of was more like basically any instance in your life, you can make it good or manageable. Like, you know, your dog could die or your spouse can die and you can have it ruin your life or you can let it go through you. And he had a lot of examples, I thought, that were things that you could apply to your life. And I just like it when we continually come up with things that are pointing me in the direction that I'm going in the right way, you know, like, because a lot of the books that we've had have kind of had the same underlying emphasis as far as like us, you know, we all want to make changes in our lives to make our lives better. And I just, I really, I I liked the book a lot. Like I really did. And he just seemed like so excited, like anyone can do this, you know, and I didn't see it as a step-by-step process. However, I just felt like he was so enthusiastic about, you know, take my magic pill and you can also live this special, you know, this, you know, like it's not rocket science. And that's of course what I've learned in the last couple of years of me working with myself, with you and just moving in the direction where you want to go. That's kind of how I thought. Okay. So it was much more about the concepts than about a practical, okay, you wake up in the morning and here's what you do because, because that, I mean, I'm going to be honest. That's what I felt like was kind of missing from the book was a, here's how, I, I didn't read it that way. And maybe uh, you guys, I, I think, I think we've talked about this before about how I don't necessarily read these books with a, I'm taking notes and I'm trying to be able to like study them or present them to you as studying. So I read it kind of like a novel. I was frequently walking or cleaning or doing something else while I was listening. So I let myself just hear what I heard. Let me actually catch up on the chat a little bit. Um, uh, Sally said that the concepts were all fine, but for me, what it offered um, was increasingly inaccessible. That's actually what I was going to, that was one of my next questions about whether or not you felt like the information was accessible because some of it didn't seem as accessible to me. Charlie says, open your heart times a thousand. Yes. <laughs> it's so funny. I love it. Um, and Marilyn said the, the book reinforced the concept of living in the present. Julie says, for me, I finally got 
that um, the divine link with a divine contract made it easier to finally access my compassionate observer. Um, oh, and I'm so grateful to Julie for this incredible experience as a third person. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. Love that. Um, oh, oh, and okay. Uh, and Terry said, sorry, there was a, there was a message to me directly about having difficulty with audio and video on their computer. So I just wanted to acknowledge that, that no worries at all, that you are absolutely welcome to simply, uh, chat via the chat with all of us. And please do. And so Terry says that, um, yes, Amanda, as if he was saying, you can do this, <laughs> pick anything in here as a tool. I love it. I, I'm really I'm really enjoying hearing your opinions about reading, reading his voice, like not just reading, but like hearing his voice as enthusiastic. And that's not how I heard it at all. <laughs> and I, it's so, it's so good for me to be able to realize that that's an option to hear it that way, because I didn't and kind of running it back through, through my mind and thinking about it as enthusiasm because Sally, Sally feels the same way. I didn't get that anyone could do it <laughs> at all. From the book. Neither did I, <laughs> not at all. In fact, I heard him say repeatedly only the true people on this path and people who are on this really specific, I, 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 I actually really heard it as being kind of exclusive, kind of only, only people who are really on this path can do this. And I only the, Enli the enlightened club only. Yeah. I, I, I heard it that way. And I, <laughs> I wonder if this just says something about me and Sally. <laughs> I think it does. And I'm really okay with that. <laughs> um, and Marilyn says, I loved the concept of let it go. So let's talk about that. Um, because this was definitely one of the things that I found to be impractical. Um, Julie says, after my epiphany, I was like, enough, dude, <laughs> but didn't get the exclusivity. <laughs> so funny. Enough, dude. I agree. I, I definitely got to a point where I was like, I could have been done with this book uh, about, you know, 20 or 30 pages ago. Like it could have used, in my opinion, some, some editing. And I, I read that we're getting off topic here. Cause I do want to talk about, um, about the concept of let it go. But I read that as a book that was written 15 years ago. Our attention spans. Do you remember how much attention you had 15 years ago before you had a smartphone? Uh, we used to be able to watch movies without concurrently being on our phone. I don't know if you do that too. I mean, not when I go to the movie theater, but when we're watching a movie in, in the living room, I'm on my phone. Like I'm, I'm always doing two things at once, literally always. So I felt like me hearing it as a little bit repetitive and a little bit long. I was like, okay, if this book came out in 2022, I, I bet it would be edited differently. I, I really feel like there would be a slightly different, not necessarily tone to it, but I feel like it would have been a little bit different. Um, and so, so let's talk a little bit about the let it go, because again, I, totally agreed with the concept, 100% agreed with the concept, didn't find it to be practical for him to just tell me 18 times, just let it go. <laughs> I, very, I very much felt like it was talking to my husband when he's trying to get me to help with like a home improvement project. And I don't know what he's talking about. And he just says the same thing 15 times slower and louder. Like, I still don't know which rent you're asking me for, sweetheart. Can you just describe it better? <laughs> So Julie, yes. <laughs> well, the letting go thing, that actually kind of irked me a little because with the group, like we feel through, we explore things. And so just letting it go, like that's a missed opportunity to me. I was kind of like, how am I better by just, oh, it doesn't bother me. Well, I'm good. <laughs> so, for me, so for me, I, again, I heard that concept as letting go because you're feeling through it, because that's how, I mean, I, I ran it through my own filter. Obviously, I, obviously, this is what I teach. That's how you let things go is by feeling through. He didn't specifically say that, which again is why I felt like it was slightly inaccessible for him to keep saying, let it go without offering a, you know, here's step one, two and, and three or, you know, seven or whatever. Um, so Marilyn says it is difficult for me to let it. I mean, me too. It's definitely difficult for me to let things go. Um, and Sally says, I may have read it in the quote unquote, this is air quotes, wrong way, perhaps a chapter at a time. 
oh, and meditate on the context before the next chunk. Well, I totally agree that that would be a really good way to read it. <laughs> I cannot tell you that I will ever do such a thing. Honestly, <laughs> I don't think I read any book that way. And it's funny because, of course, the book that I'm writing, I'm very much going to have people read something and then do something with it before they come back to it. So if they're if they're listening while they're out on a walk, <laughs> they're going to miss some of the context of my book, too. Oh, that's so funny. Um, so funny. So Terry says, I heard it more as recognizing the thing or event as a circumstance in the model, which uh, in case... Some of you don't know the model really specifically is uh, Brooke Steele from the Life Coach School, which is also, I mean, to be fair, a thought model is in the public domain as uh, cognitive behavioral tools. But so a circumstance really specifically is something that has happened in the world that has already happened. And because we would call it a circumstance in the specifically Brooke Castillo's thought model, that means that it is neutral. And the reason that we have any feelings about it is because we have thoughts about it. Um, so, so recognizing the thing or event as a circumstance um, so that it doesn't have to get stuck in me as an issue. It can just be a circumstance outside of me, something I neither need to control or make a meaning about me. And I love that. And, and I find that to again, be an excellent concept. And I'm curious not to put you on the spot, but I am curious what that looks like from a very practical sense. Like if you had to explain that to somebody who doesn't know that, is there like a process that you go through personally? And this is, I mean, this is what's so difficult about my job is slowing my brain down enough to even explain to you, like, here's how I see it as a circumstance by stopping and looking at it and kind of turning it over in my mind. And like, like if you could describe the wrench for me, Terry, <laughs> rather than telling me to let it go. <laughs> I, I cannot describe a wrench. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Me either. <laughs> no, I, this is where it comes up in, in my family. Um, somebody will say something to one of my family members or one of my close friends and, and they will be saying, well, this person said, blah, 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 blah. and, and so we might have this conversation about, but you don't have to choose to make that mean something about you. Mm -hmm. You can, you can let that, you can let it float out into the universe or you can let it, you can uh, be curious about what it might mean about that person who said it. And one of the things my husband used to say was, yeah, but what if they meant it to? <laughs> yeah. And I go, then you get to choose whether it works or it doesn't. You don't, you, somebody hands you a pamphlet. You don't have to take it. And you I never do. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I almost always do so that they'll stop talking because I don't want them to keep talking to me. So I'll just take any pamphlet. I can throw it away or we'll recycle it. But yeah. So, so I am curious, have you ever thought about your process really specifically? Like, do you have a trick that you can kind of go to really specifically? Here's what I'm asking. What is the like the trigger for you that moment where you're like oh this is a thought or oh this is a circumstance like do you know is it a it, you notice that you're having a feeling or you notice that you're having a thought or you notice something like do you know what causes you to be able to step back and recognize something as a circumstance and then let it go me yeah I, I see it. I see it in myself when I feel this urge to fix something, and and that's a thought. And and I think for different people with different personalities, we're going to experience it. Like I experience it as a thought. Some people are going to experience an emotion. Some people are going to experience a body sensation. But I know I've hit the tar baby, so to speak, if I start having this urge to fix something. Okay. That's see. And then that to me is the information. And I realize that it is different for everybody, which is why it's so hard to put it in a book. I mean, it is hard to, to put something like that in a book because everybody is going to be different for me personally. I would say that my like 
trigger, the thing that I notice is when something is going around and around and around and around and around in my head. If I, if I can hear myself thinking something for the 15th time, I'm like, Oh, I need to, I need to do something with this. I need to go ahead and like stop and, and pay attention to this. And so I am really curious whether or not you, all of you got that out of the book. Like, were you personally able to read the book where he says, let it go. And then make that into something in your own life. Or did it just sound like good advice? Like it just sounds good. Oh yeah. Let it go. But, but what? (laughs) So, so I am really curious about how you, all of you were able to kind of integrate really specifically to let it go or, or the other one that I also was really hoping for a little bit more of a step-by-step was the open your heart. Just keep your heart open, open your heart. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I hear you saying it. Could you describe the wrench please? <laughs> because I, I don't really know what to do with that. Sally says the open your heart really wound me up. <laughs> Tell me about it, Sally. Come and come and actually talk to me about this. <laughs> what does that look like for you to be wound up about it? <laughs> it's not kind of not fair. So many people enjoyed the book, and I was very kind of like, all these concepts are really lovely, and I've met them elsewhere, and no, I'm not actually enjoying this delivery of these concepts at all. So it's maybe it's maybe it's a bit unfair. No, it, the, I was okay with the first five chapters, I think, which were all about awareness, and they were going along quite nicely. And then he got to the sort of second section of the book, um, and then when well, he did the classic Western thing, he he braced past kind of the, the Vedic idea of prana and the and the Taoist idea of chi, and landed on there's energy that's not to do with food. And therefore, open your heart, and off he went. <laughs> and and I'm thinking, well, you know, both Darish, I'm happy with that, but the Darish tradition and the Vedic tradition both has quite complicated systems that allow you to eventually have something like a, a heart that could open. Oh. And and he was just kind of a typical kind of, oh yes, it's all just energies. You know, we'll substitute the word energy for for chi or for for prana, and then off we go. And so if I say, open your heart, now, was he saying, you know, I want you to, there's a, a chakra system and your heart is a name of one of the chakras and you can open your chakras by doing this. It was, none of that detail was in there. So I just kind of like think, well, okay, you've, you've talked, what do you mean by heart? Do you mean a chakra? Do you mean, are you talking about chi? Are you talking about something completely different? And there was just no, nothing that gave me a clue. So I was, I was kind of, that was the beginning of me and the book going separate ways. Well, and I, I noticed, I noticed how he pulled from lots of different, I'll just call it systems because I can't come up with a better word for it right now. But he, I felt like he was trying to be very equal opportunity, like, kind of no matter what you think. And, and Marilyn says that the author is Buddhist. I actually, I don't know that for sure. I, I would not have, I would not have gotten that from the text of the book. And I did uh, literally no research on him personally. Um, so, so I don't know because I felt like, like you said, Sally, I feel like he pulled a little bit from everything without really digging into any one and I see in the context of the book how how that was probably for the the best for him because he was trying to say, I've pulled from all these ideas and here's mine, which is which is what we do when we're writing books. I'll be honest. I, I kind of gloss over, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy tools in my book too. I'm like, oh yeah, people have talked about this, but here's my thing. So I do think that that I think that's just an author thing. And And I didn't find that part of it specifically difficult because I'm not as familiar with those traditions, with those systems. So therefore, the little bit that he was offering me felt interesting without feeling like not enough. And I can I can see when you know more how that could be infuriating. (laughs) For for me, it was more like untethered concepts. 
<laughs> you know, untethered soul. It was kind of untethered concepts. I'm, I've got these. I've got these, all these concepts, and I'm not actually going to tether them to anything. And I guess I would prefer to have familiar things delivered in some kind of context. And that book didn't seem to be. It was kind of it's spiritual. And, you know, the, the word soul and the word spiritual was all thrown in there. We had bits of scripture. We had bits of Buddhism. Um, I think there was a tiny bit of Taoism in there. It was a very yeah, eclectic mix. And I was kind of land somewhere, anchor on something. But, you oh. know, where are you coming from? Is all this. Oh, so I'm curious. And I mean, please feel free to everybody in the chat and or chime in. I'm curious how the book would have landed if he were really only pulling from one kind of tradition or religion or system, whatever word you'd like to use, I do think, I mean, as, as an author and, and as a, I'll call myself a public figure, I don't want to alienate somebody who has a specific, you know, religious practice nor do I want to teach a specific religious practice. And so I, I read that from him as I'm not trying to teach you to be, you know, a Buddhist or a Christian or, or something specific. I'm, I, his, I think his, his religion, if you want to call it that, was enlightened. I mean, that's, that's sort of what I took away from it. And I am very curious to all of you, would, would it have landed better or worse if he were aiming for one specific tradition. So Sally, do you think that he could have, would have, should have landed on, on one? I mean, I would, I'd be happy for him to root it in his own thinking for him okay. to say, I'm drawing all this from all these different places. And, and this is my system, which oh. is what you tend to do. I mean, you do with, 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 with your own work, you're drawing on CBT. Yeah. But you are sort of, you kind of nod to it and then you say, this is my system. And I felt that he, it wasn't the fact that it was an eclectic mix. It was the fact that I didn't end up knowing where he stood. Oh. Other than the fact that let's all become enlightened. And it's, you know, if you, if, you, if you give up on pain and let everything go and open your heart, then you'll be this enlightened being and you can live perpetually in this joyful place. <laughs> yeah, I, that, we're going to get to that part too. Okay, yeah. so... So this is interesting because Julie says, I got the impression that his system was a mix. Exactly. And I, uh, Terry says, I think the generality offered empowerment to take what I wanted, fit it into my worldview and use the tools that serve me. Exactly. I, I definitely took that from it. And again, oh, and Marilyn says, um, I like the different views on all of the concepts. I, I do think that this is a 2022 thing. Versus the 2000, it was it seven or nine. I feel like I keep saying both and I really don't remember what year the, I mean, but you know, I have it open in another, nope, I don't have the information on there. Okay. Um, I know that it was a while ago, late aughts, if I remember correctly. Um, I do feel that we all as a society have come to expect, Maggie, thank you so much, 2007. Okay. I do think we have all come to expect when a person like stands on their own view and writes a book that they're going to brand it, they're going to call it a name. They're going to make it very clear. This is the Paula B way, or, you know, this is the Michael, like we today, we recognize brands as being a person's own system. Whereas Again, in 2007, before we had smartphones and before we had social media like we do now, simply saying, here, I've pulled from this mix of all these places. Here's an idea. And it doesn't have its own like brand behind it other than, I mean, the Untethered Soul now does have a brand. I do think the audience had a very different expectation. So Sally, actually, I'm really curious. Did you read it when it came out in 2007 or did you read it recently? No, I mean, it's the first time I've read it is for book club. Okay. Um, and I was interested that it was as old a book as it was. Yeah. In a sense. But I mean, the many, the many books on my shelves, most of them are older. I'm, I'm, I'm not into the, the modern, uh, the modern outpouring necessarily, because generally that for, for me, a lot of the modern books are just froth. They're recycled froth. Absolutely. It's all been said before and they were, were said all again. And it's kind of, well, that doesn't work either. 
I think, I just I think for me he wasn't quite he 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 didn't quite land it somewhere or point it or, or put it in it was I don't know maybe it was the concepts were familiar and I just wanted something more than a reminding of those concepts. Well, and this was, I would say that this was my biggest criticism of the book. And I had a few, I'll be honest. I had a few criticisms. I didn't know what his goal was. And you guys, if you know me, (laughs) you know, that's my first question. What is your goal? I realized that he didn't state his goal, by the way, never ending happiness, hundred percent happiness all the time. That was my other biggest criticism, but he didn't state that goal until 72% of the way into the book. I looked because I was listening to the audio. I literally stopped it. And I'm like, where am I? He hadn't clarified where he was going with any of this until almost the end of the book. And I do think that that is also a 2007 thing versus a 2022 thing. I think well, and it could be, it could be a, a get your goal thing too. Y'all, when you come to me, you know, I'm going to ask you about your goal. You know, I am, you know, that in the first three pages of my book, when it comes out, I'm going to tell you what your goal is. This is your goal. This is how we're getting there. Like, so I agree that I, I didn't know where he was going with any of it either. I, I felt, I felt like I was open for it and along for the ride for, for most of the book. Like it was okay with me that he didn't land on something specific, but then when he did land on hundred percent happiness all the time. I was like, okay, when's the book done? <laughs> I struggled with that. I did. You guys, I am going to ask it. Here we go. Here we go. What did you think about being told that you could be happy 100% of the time? Do you think that's possible? I know you guys are looking at me and you're like, well, Paula doesn't think it's possible. So now I can't say I do, <laughs> but I am curious because I mean, he presents this as you absolutely can. You can be happy 100% of the time. Shannon says it's not realistic. I totally agree. Julie totally says who's going to clean the toilets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and Terry says define your terms. Yes. What is happiness? So I felt, I felt like he defined his terms as ecstasy all day, every day, 24 7. I, I found it very interesting how how he kind of said what he was saying and sort of scooted around what he was saying because he's like oh you can be happy all of the time and live this life where things happen but i didn't see how those two things could could happen at the same time other than open your heart and just like oh <laughs> For me, happiness, and he even described it, happiness as that uplifting feeling and that feeling of lightness, that feeling of joy. Um, And Marilyn says that it's a goal uh, to be happy all the time. And Julie says, I think my divine link can be, but my human component can't. Otherwise, there's no experience. So interesting. So interesting. Do you mind if I actually, like, pick your brain a little bit on that? Like, what... How do you experience that? Like in reality, in your human body, how do you experience the divine link being happy all the time when the human component isn't? So I kind of view it as that divine contract of this experience and, you know, that sort of thing. So there's joy even in the suffering because that's what you've signed up for and it's a blessing to be here okay. so that's sort of the divine link perspective but the human is like this sucks you know this uh, this is crappy well, and that's what i'm curious about like what the actual like experience of that is like like do you feel happy all the time i think the divine link always is yeah okay so yeah describe the wrench how do you experience the divine link on a like moment to moment daily basis? So it's almost like a pulling back. So for me, it's almost like a pulling back. So the perspective is here instead of here. So okay. it's almost like a 
it sounds insane, but I, I, no, it's no, really, no, truly it not. I'm actually, no, I'm, I'm completely following you. And I mean, I, I feel, I feel like everybody here who read the book has at least some idea of what you're talking about. Like, don't, don't worry about, okay. about that part of it. So even yesterday I had a terrible experience that I went through and I, I couldn't do it during, but afterward I was able to kind of go, wow, you know, Julie went through that, but my divine link wasn't suffering in that moment. It, you know, we're, it's a connection for sure. And it's me. It's just, it's hard to describe without describing third person, which does sound insane. So. No, no, again, I, I think you have the perfect audience here. And, and that is, I mean, honestly, that is, that is the difficulty with all of these concepts is to somebody who is like maybe brand new to it or has right. never been exposed to thinking about your thoughts other than, I mean, we absolutely can, but we're not taught how to, that yes, it does almost sound like you're describing yourself in third person. And so therefore when we literally do, it's like, okay, but I understand where you're going with this. So, so here's my question. Mm -hmm. How do you know that the divine link wasn't suffering too. Because I'm the divine link. Okay. But in the moment, I'm doing a Schrodinger's cat thing. In the moment, and there's a feeling. I can feel you, compassion for what Julie is going through. Even in the moment. All, even in the moment. Yeah, I, well, sometimes it's hard in the moments, mostly afterward, right? Because well, it's so moment, caught is, up in the pain and in the, you know, the is, trauma. And this is why I'm asking, and not just a few, but truly of the group, about whether or not it feels realistic to have that connection to, if you want to call it the divine link. I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter what words we use. I, I really do think the concept is exactly what he was talking about in the book. I think it's very similar to a lot of the things that I talk about. Yes. And I am curious if the goal is happy all the time, total joy, total ecstasy, how do you do that in a moment that feels just a hundred percent human? I don't, I experience the moment. Okay. And I don't even try. I, I, like in that moment of trauma, like I'm supposed to have that experience. I'm not supposed to kind of pull myself or th I'm, that's more like dissociating to me. And then I'm robbing myself. Right. That was my argument against the book. I think you and I are saying the same thing. Differently. Which yeah. is that I didn't find the hundred percent happiness to, well, first of all, it's not my goal. I mean, truly my stated goal is to have a human experience. It, it really, really is. I, I am a hundred percent on board with pain, with suffering, <laughs> with unnecessary suffering, even because that is the human experience to make ourselves suffer un unnecessarily. So that's why, that's why when he's saying, oh, you can feel happy all the time. I think he's I'm saying you can access. I don't think we're supposed to be, a, a, I think we can access at any time. So at any time, but he, uh, here's, here's why I'm arguing with you is because I'm trying to argue with him. Okay. <laughs> he really, in my opinion, made it sound like you should access it all the time. I, I felt like it was a very imperative. You should be accessing this enlightenment a hundred percent of the time. And I think I took that and made it my own. I, as did I. I my spin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Otherwise, I would just argue with it. Well, I did find myself arguing with him a lot, which is why I, 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 which is why I heard the narration the way I heard it. And really glad that I finished the book yesterday because I did spend a lot of time after finishing the book, simply thinking about the concepts and turning them over and being like, I agreed with uh, probably 85% of what he said. I just disagreed with 95% of the way he said it. <laughs> so, so having that, that bit of time and space after finishing the book to, to turn it over. And, and like you said, Julie, to, to make it work for me, I feel, I feel a lot better about the book today than I did yesterday. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so Terry says, I think he did a decent job addressing self-concept and how giving up the pursuit of protecting and defending the self-concept leads to what he calls happiness. So Terry, I'm really curious. Did he, and I might've missed, I mean, I like a hundred percent could have missed it. Did he define happiness 
in a way that that does seem to kind of bridge this humanness and and trying to access it. And you can unmute. It's okay. You don't have to just type. I, I don't. I don't think he did a good job at all of defining okay. happiness. I thought it, he was annoyingly vague about <laughs> about what is happiness. And so I I chose to have my own definition. Um, but I do I, I do think he did a, a good job of describing the ego and how we we what we think of as self mm -hmm. is is what what I was always taught is ego um and and we're we're so invested and we're so busy protecting that thing and if we can as julie said look look at it in the and julie you're doing a great i mean <laughs> <Ellen does. laughs> of explaining that and and thinking of it as a third person and just going oh terry's ego got poked but that doesn't change the course of the universe that doesn't need to ruin anybody's day it doesn't need to and and it is yes in the moment but but later in the post-game analysis we can go oh it was just ego that got its feelings hurt okay does that, does that make sense and so it's like i i think he did not do a good job of it okay um, but then i think each of us can this is a walking stars event we we call it something that that makes it work and then it works <laughs> exactly as soon as your brain can glom onto it a certain way this all totally works absolutely well and i guess that's i guess that's what i was kind of curious about because i was really waiting for him to explain what his day is like like he wakes up and something happens how, I mean, other than the, you just ask yourself, do I want to be happy? Okay. But isn't there then, I mean, here I am being argumentative because that's what I do. Isn't there then a moment when you are not happy, when you notice that you are not happy because you have to recognize that you'd like to be happy. And he didn't talk about that gap. To me, that gap is where all the magic is. That gap is where you do this thing, where you find your divine link, where you pull back, where you do the, where you do the stuff. And he didn't talk about that gap to my satisfaction, which is why I think every single one of us read it and said, well, here's how I'm going to deal with that gap. I'm going to define happiness this way. Here's how I'm going to see this in my life. And maybe that was, maybe that was genius in the, his book to, to leave that gap open for all of us to fill in with our own brains. I will go with that. We'll call it genius. <laughs> oh, Julie even says, maybe we're supposed to fill in the blanks. So it would speak to us. Yes. Maybe he meant to take us off. Well, so I have to tell you, I was thinking about that, especially those of you who are in the Get Your Goal group. You know that my job is to show you your minds. And sometimes I show you your minds by telling you something that feels very controversial. <laughs> and perhaps, perhaps that was his point. I mean, I can see, especially in the first several chapters, that he was definitely I felt very provocative, very, you don't even know that your brain is doing this all the time. And, and he was definitely trying to kind of poke the bear. I felt, however, having poked that bear, you know, years ago, I was like, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. You, you thought to you thought, it's okay. I got you. I got you. <laughs> we're good. We're good. <laughs> we're doing cooler, cooler. After, yeah. you, after you, he wasn't really provocative enough. I think that's the problem. <laughs> you say you read it as provocative didn't seem remotely provocative to me <laughs> really the whole chapter where he talked about how you're gonna die you're definitely gonna die and there's nothing you can do about it Death. i feel like some people must have heard that provocatively I, again i didn't this is this is a conversation i've had with myself so many times but i felt like especially in 2007 i feel like that was very provocative none of you no, i mean that was, that was that. kind of <laughs> So interesting. So interesting. Oh, and Marilyn said that he has an updated book out this month. Oh, Marilyn, do you know, is it, is it this book that is being updated or is it a, a different? And Julie really thought, man, that's dark. <laughs> you know, that's a thought, right? <laughs> that's too funny. I saw, um, 
Oh, when I was looking for uh, for book club questions, I, I did see that there's like a, a workbook that goes along with this book. Did anybody did anybody do like the work? Oh, you got it. So I, I am curious about that because I have no uh, no experience with it. Is the workbook helpful? I mean, does it have like really specific exercises or does it just say now sit down and open your heart? <laughs> it's okay. You can unmute. Oh, it's a journal format. Oh, oh, very interesting. And Marilyn says it is the same concept called living untethered. Oh, you know, we might, we might need to revisit this because I living untethered. I mean, just from the title seems to me like it's going to answer a lot of the questions that I had about the book. Like, what does that look like? Julie says, those are the how to, I mean, judging Judging the book by its cover, Living Untethered makes it sound like it's going to be a lot more practical, a lot more of like, here's what you do. You wake up in the morning. Here's how you find it. Here's how you, you know, pull back. And like, I, I felt like he described a lot of the concepts in ways that that made sense, again, because of my own practice. But because of my practice is why it made sense. Um. And Marilyn says, I have the book. It is practical. Okay. We might need to revisit this because I, I would very much like to uh, to hear his version of a how-to. Um, and Terry says, I have found the journal prompts in the journal really helpful. They help me slow down and observe. That's really good information. And honestly, I'll, I'll be very transparent with you. That's really good marketing information for me because I would definitely like to talk to my editor about doing a journaling book along with my book when it comes out because I do think that my book is going to be inaccessible to some people. I mean, it is it is a how-to, but also for somebody who is new to these concepts, I do feel like there needs to be that layer of ask yourself this really specific question and then listen for it versus ask yourself a question, which... I know it's hard. I know that's super hard. Um, Sally says a great marketing ploy, <laughs> leave people with concepts and know how to, and then sell the how to. It is, again, this is such a 2022 thing. It really is. I, you guys, I will be honest with you because I always am. My, uh, my journey to publication, they, they want you to have a brand. They want your book to basically be a brand where it has a packaged concept that you can explain and leave in a package and better yet, if there's some tie in to something else, I mean, it, it's all sales, you know, that it's all sales and, and the thing, I mean, truly that a book that is on the self help shelf should help you <laughs> and it should help you by offering concepts and then also perhaps in a different book offering you the exact step-by-step -step of here's what to do with these concepts i totally believe that you need to understand the concepts before you can put it into practice like trying to do both simultaneously i, I think would be really difficult I, I think it would be very difficult for a lot of people and and so i again i felt like I felt like this book had concepts that made sense. And I really wish it had more how to because I under, already understood the concepts. So for somebody who was coming at this kind of fresh, it was probably more information than they could take in. You know, I mean, I, and actually, I am really curious. I mean, was was this whole like thinking about your thoughts? Was it new to to any of you? I mean, I, I know, obviously, I know some of you in the Get Your Goal group, it was not new. That was not a new concept at all. And I, I suspect if you if you know me, that it's not new, but you also might not know me. Like, you, you might be here brand new from Chirp and being like, yeah, didn't know any of that. And that's, I mean, no shame in that. This is, this is the fun thing about introducing people to these concepts is it is kind of mind blowing when you first hear it. It's like, wait what <laughs> I can think about my thoughts because we don't learn that in school. And so Marilyn says not new to you. Okay. You guys, you guys, this was super fascinating. Thank you all so much. I mean, always, always thank you so much for being willing to speak up and like share your experiences. This, this is how we do 
around here. We, we share, I'm not trying to teach you necessarily, but this is, this is the kind of conversation that we have. Having said that, oh my gosh, our next book, we have one coming up. I know Maggie, I loved hearing everyone's thoughts too. Exactly. And Jamie says, thank you. Terry says, thank you. You guys, thank all of you so, so much. I love hearing your thoughts. I love, I do really love the book club format where it's not just me being like, here's the call of B way, but like, here's this book. And some of it resonates. Some of it doesn't. I love knowing what resonates and what doesn't. So our next one, I suspect will resonate. I'm judging this one by its cover entirely. I've only read the title. I don't know anything about this book. I've never had it recommended to me. I don't know anything about it. It's called The Mindful Path to Self-Compassion. To me, this sounds very... Uh, Terry, are you about to like pull it up out of your bookshelf right now? You already have that? I literally just love that. I love it. Oh my gosh, so you'll be ready. We'll have a meeting sometime in October. I don't have a date for us yet. This one sounded to me like a little bit more of a how-to, which y'all know. I like a how-to. I really do. I, I'm I'm in it for the how-tos. So we'll see. Um, it is another man. I'm very curious. Very curious how the narration is going to go. I have found myself working through the narration from the man books. Partly, I don't know if you guys have noticed, and this one is no exception, it's never narrated by the author. I find that fascinating. I, I wonder I wonder how different it would feel because I felt that way with the Bob Litwin book that we read a couple months ago when, when the narrator was talking about my wife died and I was like, that's not you. When, when the narrator was talking about like spiritual awakening and stuff, it's like, that's not you, Michael Singer. So I'm very curious uh, Christopher Germer, uh, by the way, is the author of our next book, The Mindful Path to Self-Compassion by Christopher Germer. Um, he's a PhD. Um, and I'm wondering, maybe he was maybe he was too busy to narrate his own book. Uh, Maggie says, Paula, will, will your upcoming book be available as an audio book? Possibly. I have... Um, we have options out on it. And I don't know... I don't know when the audio book gets sold as an audio book. I think... I think for some like big authors, it's probably concurrent. I don't know if it is for somebody like me writing a debut. I do have it in my written contract that I get dibs on being the narrator, but I do have to audition. So you guys, you guys just wish me luck on that one because I'm going to have to slow down and I'm going to have to not laugh at my own jokes because I think I'm hilarious. I, this is going to be a problem for me. I've actually already started practicing when I'm typing. When I'm like writing my book, I read it out loud to myself sometimes. <laughs> so yes, I do believe that it should come out on audiobook. It's not even being published until next summer. I hope I get the part two. Thank you, Maggie. I appreciate that. And Marilyn says, where can we um, view this podcast later? I will tell you that um, it won't be viewable as like a video. It will be audio only and it will be out this Sunday under the umbrella of the Fitness Matters podcast, which you can find everywhere. It's on iTunes. It's on SoundCloud, Spotify. It's on um, Amazon. You can say, Alexa, play the Fitness Matters podcast for me. So, so yes, it will be available everywhere on um on sunday you guys thank you thank you all so so much i love book club day thank you guys so much we'll see you again soon if you're getting a lot out of the fitness matters podcast and you're ready to take it to the next level you're going to love the get your goal coaching and accountability group we take all the theory and knowledge here on the podcast and actually apply it in real life on your real weight loss and fitness goals it's hands-on, it's fun, and it works. Find out more at paulabfitness.com slash get dash your dash goal. And let's get your goal.